One of the questions that I get fairly often is, what do you eat in one day? Today, I'll answer that question, but with one slight alteration. Today's video will demonstrate a sample day of eating for me in Africa. I shot some video of my breakfast, lunch, and dinner in Kumi, Uganda in a recent mission trip, and you'll get to see how I try to stay low-carb while on an overseas mission. Now, Benedicta doesn't appear in the breakfast and lunch segments, but she does make an appearance in the evening meal, and I'll explain the reason for her mysterious absence and then dinner appearance toward the end of the video. So, let's go to Africa. Well, I am coming to you from Kumi, Uganda, and we are at uh, a nice hotel, but our breakfast, unfortunately, is mostly carbs that we're being offered. Now, we do get an omelet, and I'm going to enjoy that omelet, but otherwise, we've got bananas, and we've got all kinds of fruit, stuff in the old days I would have just enjoyed and eaten a lot of, and then we've got, a lot of times, they have plenty of bread, they have potatoes, uh, they've got a sort of a chapati, so a lot of different foods, but sadly, uh, most of it I either can't eat or won't eat much. I am going to have just a few, maybe three or four of the little slices of fried plantain. I just love those, so I'm going to cheat a little bit. Uh, but I have to watch myself, and I could normally, you know, eat uh, so much more than I will today. But we'll talk about what I will eat uh, when I get to the table. So here is the heart of my breakfast. I do have three pieces of watermelon, but one interesting thing is the African watermelon is not nearly as sweet as most American watermelon. I, I think it hasn't been genetically modified like they do with American fruit. So it's not nearly as sweet, not nearly as much sugar. I did get a few of those plantain chips. Uh, they're just too good to pass up. And after all, I'm in Africa, so sometimes I have to taste a little of the local culture, the local food, even though I know it's probably not the best thing. I wouldn't eat it at home normally. I do have an omelet, no worries there. It's a Spanish omelet, it has some veggies in it, uh, so that's good. Got my coffee, so I'm good for now, and then uh, I'll be back in a moment after I finish all this and show you how I finish up and help myself to get a little bit more full. Well, I finished part one of my breakfast. I had the omelet. It was good. It was on the smaller side, but it was good. And had my three watermelon slices, my four little plantain, uh, fried plantain chips. Uh, it was all good. And interestingly, even the plantain uh, wasn't sweet at all. I, I think the Africans just simply do not uh, use genetically modified fruit, and that's a very good thing. But the problem is I just didn't get filled up. I mean, I'm... I'm not a scrawny little guy. I mean, I, there's a bigger people than me, but there's smaller people as well. So I need more to fill me up. Ergo, I've got my trusty backpack with me. And in the backpack, I've got all sorts of low-carb treasures. I have some cheese. I'm just going to have one of these. But uh, cheese is low-carb and very filling. Cheese is sort of... Uh, a bread substitute for diabetics. I have a Quest bar. Now I'm not even, this isn't even a full one. I had part of it I think last night. But I'll eat about a third of this Quest bar and this is a high protein, high fiber, low carb. And the little bit of sweetening that's in it is erythritol. So uh, not going to do much to blood sugar. And last but definitely not least, I take these wherever I go. I've been doing it for decades, I think, probably the last 15, 18 years, peanuts. Uh, peanuts are filling, they're relatively low carb, and what carbs they do have dissolve very slowly, and so they create very gentle spike in your blood sugar. So between the peanuts and about a third of a Quest bar, which is like one and a half net grams of carbs, and one of these cheese sticks, which is about two grams of carbs, uh, very little effect on blood sugar but and this is important this will fill me up I mean granted I won't be as stuffed as it as I went as if I went to IHOP or somewhere and just ate a huge old omelet and so forth but I will be full enough until lunchtime so I've got my coffee I've got my low-carb snacks I'm good 
and uh, we'll report back around lunchtime. Well, it's lunchtime. We just had a wonderful session. I had the day off, had the morning off, I'll have the evening off, and Benedicta was teaching, and she was on fire <laughs> this morning. She had him laughing, and uh, a really very powerful presentation. But anyway, we're here to talk about food and uh, keeping our carbs low. I'm going to shock you right now, so I hope you're sitting down, and I hope you don't uh, faint. But I'm going to eat a sandwich. Yeah, you heard that right. I'm going to eat a sandwich. Now, keep in mind, I'm in Africa, and I have to sort of bend the rules a little bit, although I won't break the rules, but I might bend them a little bit. Now, you say, how can you eat a sandwich? Well, one reason I can eat a sandwich is because of this, nature's own double fiber whole wheat bread. I found this years ago and found out that it only has seven net grams of carbs per slice. And that means I can eat a sandwich with both top and bottom, and I'm still at 14 grams of carbs, which really isn't too bad. You say, yeah, but the stuff you're putting in the sandwich, that, that's going to add more carbs. Well, actually, no, it won't, because I'm going to make a tuna sandwich. And this star-kissed chunk light tuna has, can you guess how many carbs? Zero. The mayonnaise, how many carbs? Zero. The dill relish, how many carbs? <laughs> Zero. Now, if you buy the sweetened dill relish, then yeah, it'll have carbs for sure. But this is the unsweet, no carbs at all. And that's going to be the contents of my sandwich, the tuna, the mayonnaise, and the dill relish. Now, if I was at home, I'd make it a little differently. I would probably add some celery and cut it into small bits, probably add some sunflower seeds and make it a little more interesting. But in Africa, you're limited, and so uh, it's easy for me to pack some cans of tuna, pack a little of this uh, stuff like the relish in the plastic bottles. It's not going to break. Throw together a sandwich, and I'm going to eat a sandwich with 14 grams of net carbs. Now, you may say, yeah, but still, you're eating bread. That's not keto. No, it's really not keto, but it's not bad. Keep in mind, the American Diabetes Association recommends that diabetics should have 45 to 60 grams of carbs per meal. <laughs> I still can't get over that, and maybe they've changed by now, but for the longest time, they were recommending 45 to 60 grams. So by the American Diabetes Association, I'm way under the limit there at 14 grams. And the truth is, I know these 14 grams are not going to raise my blood sugar much because I've tested myself again and again. If I can stay under 20 grams of net carbs, I'm good. I will not have blood sugar anywhere close to 140 as a peak. And of course, if you know my videos much and you know what I share, I, I always watch my peaks more than anything else. So my 14 gram sandwich is uh, going to stay under that 140. It's going to stay under 20 grams of net carbs. I should be just fine. Now, you may say, yeah, but one sandwich, Dennis, is that really going to fill you up? <laughs> well, probably not, not completely, but it'll fill me up enough. There really isn't a law that says that we should just stuff ourselves at every meal, and especially on uh, special situations like when I'm in Africa, uh, the goal is not to stuff myself at every meal. The goal is to get enough food, to get enough energy, and keep on going. And when I get back to America, I can enjoy a lot of the other dietary substitutes and low-carb substitutes that I uh, have there at home. But here, uh, I'm going to be just fine. So, we'll see you later on with another meal update. It is getting toward evening, and they're about to come and pick us up for our evening evangelistic crusade. And uh, before we go, I usually will have a snack. Now, <laughs> I know that uh, I normally uh, do not encourage a lot of snacking. It's better to just eat your basic meals and be done with it. But the reason I will have a snack before we go out and spend several hours in the African heat is that uh, it's just exhausting and I need a little strength. So I've got my tea. It'll kind of perk me up and uh, give me a little strength. I've got some beef jerky, which uh, is high in protein and fairly low in carbs. They did add sugar. I don't like that, but you can hardly find beef jerky that doesn't have some added sugar, but it's not much. I've got another one of these string cheeses, so very few carbs here. And this 
amazing food. It's called almonds. And I was just looking at the carbs in, uh, that this can lists, and it says you can have 28 of these almond nuts, and you'll get two net grams of carbs. Isn't that amazing? 28 of these babies, which I won't eat that many. I might eat 10 or so. But if I ate 28 of them, I'd only be getting two net grams of carbs. So a nice low carb snack, some tea, and I'm ready for the evening. Now I'll come back and have a more official meal. And again, that's not something I would normally do. I don't like to eat that late, but uh, when you're in Africa doing these missions, you have to bend a few rules. And uh, we'll get back and I'll share what I eat then. But for now, this will be enough to get me through the evening. And uh, just praying that God will bless us in this evening crusade. So we'll see you back with my final meal of the day in uh, a few hours. Well, I couldn't get Benedicta to be a part of the breakfast video. Couldn't be, get her to be a part of the lunch video because everything has to be perfect before she'll be on camera. But now she's, we've just come back from the evening meeting. Your hair's looking great. You've got all your makeup on and you're ready to show yourself to the world. Yes, I am. <laughs> well, thank you for honoring us with your presence. Thank you for inviting me. Okay, so Benedicta has had a busy, busy day. This was her day to work and my day more or less to take off. I was sort of her cameraman for uh, much of the day, but I had it pretty easy. What kind of stuff were you doing today? In the morning, I preached at the conference and the evening, um, it was my turn to preach and uh, share my testimonies at the crusade ground, which I did. We just returned. And then another thing we did was to um, showcase our little kids, the orphanage children. We made 150 clothes for them. And they look marvelous. They, they look wonderful in their clothes smart and uh, you know kind of happy so i think they will remember this in years to come they will not forget our visit in kumi let's get to the point here what are we going to have for dinner tonight we are having chicken and the chicken avocado and soda oh. <laughs> Cook yeah, <laughs> right. I don't imagine most of you Americans have ever had African chicken on a stick like this. Uh, but this is actually fairly common in a lot of places in Africa. Uh, it's not KFC for sure. But on the other hand, it is roasted and it's not fr it's not fried. And so it has less of a bread coating. Uh, I, I like the taste pretty well. How about you? I like it also. I like it. It's really well roasted and uh, seasoned. So, yeah. yeah. They, they have a good flavor. You, the, the negative side is you have to work a little harder. There's not as much flesh on these bones. These African chickens are lean and mean. <laughs> so uh, you just don't get as much flesh. And so you have to eat more and nibble around the bones. But the flavor actually is, is quite good, don't you think? Yeah, the flavor has a uh, kind of a nice taste and uh, the flavor is good. She mentioned avocados. Have you ever seen an avocado this size? I mean, this baby is big. It's practically a meal in itself. Did you eat avocados all your life, even as a child in Nigeria? Yes, um, we ate avocado a lot in Nigeria in those days when I was little. And because uh, it's a plant every, almost every family has. Um, uh, among other trees we plant that, you know, grow and uh, bear fruits, avocado is one of them. Yeah, and you know, when I f came to Africa, it, it was actually several years after I started coming, but uh, somebody bought me an African avocado and I couldn't believe how big it is. And of course, an avocado is loaded with fat. And here's the interesting thing. A lot of people know that keto type people and those on low carb, they eat avocados a lot. But what some people don't realize is they actually have quite a few carbs. Does that shock you? Yeah, yeah, it's shocking. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that shocking? Yeah, an avocado actually has quite a few carbs, but most of the carbs in the avocado are fiber carbs that do not affect blood sugar. So even though this monster probably has, I don't know, 25 grams of carbs or more, I don't, I'm not sure, but most of those are fiber, so it's not going to affect blood sugar, and you're going to get filled up. You're going to get a lot of good, healthy fats, so uh, you really can't argue with it. No. You ready to eat some chicken and avocado? 
I'm stopping, ready to go. <laughs> now, I know uh, Benedicta shocked you a little bit when she mentioned soda. Uh, and, uh, you know, I have to be honest, I do drink diet soda. I, in true confessions, I don't do it a lot. And when I'm home, I don't probably do it as much as in Africa. But when we come home from one of these long African crusade nights, I'm ready to treat myself a little bit. And a Coke Zero uh, will, will do that for me. And uh, I've kind of convinced you to go with the Diet Cokes mostly, haven't I? Yes, you have. Yeah, I haven't converted her in all aspects. And when we have uh, breakfast in the morning, she'll eat a lot more fruit than I will, which is okay for her because it uh, doesn't affect her blood sugar much. But uh, she does tend to go to the Diet Cokes. And so I know I'll get some nasty comments from people saying, oh, how could you eat a Diet Coke? Don't you know you'll be dead by the morning? <laughs> but uh, so I've been doing it for some years. I, like I said, I don't do it a lot. But when I'm in Africa, I tend to do it more. It's my little reward for myself after a long, hot African day. Of course, the greatest reward is just serving the Lord. So if you'll excuse us, we're going to dive into our chicken and avocado. Now, that's not a lot of variety, but again... The goal of your meal should not be variety to have eight or ten different types of food on your plate, but rather to get fairly full without uh, just jamming carbs and uh, raising your blood sugar like crazy. Well, there you have it. One day's worth of eating for me in Africa. Now, when I'm in America, my diet is a bit stricter than what you just saw, and one of these days I'll do a video about what I eat in a day in America. If you're interested in seeing a video report of that particular mission in Uganda, and maybe you're curious about how Benedict and I sound when we're preaching and teaching, I'll put a link in the description notes where you can get an idea of just how we do these African missions. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up so YouTube will promote it and others will get a chance to see it. And consider subscribing to this channel and then click that bell icon so you'll be notified every time we post a new video. Well, that's it for now. God bless. See you again soon.